Hi, this is uh, James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and we're here to talk about a piece of homework that you have for the Social Networks class at UMA. We're looking at it right now here on the screen. Uh, your job is to go through eight steps that will acquaint you with Node XL software. The first step is to gain access to Node XL software itself. Now, you can do this in two ways. The first is that you can work through the University College Rockland campus, which has computers with Node XL available. Uh, also, the Randall Student Center, uh, University of Maine at Augusta uh, Student Computer Lab, and the Eastport Hall, University of Maine at Augusta Bangor campus Computer Lab. All three of these locations have Node XL installed. Uh, IT has checked this out and it should be ready to go. Um, the other option is if you do have a late model computer with late model uh, Microsoft Office Suite, uh, this is from 2007 on, then you should be uh, ready to go and install the uh, Node XL template. The way to do that is to click this link to the Social Media Research Foundation website, or you could just type in the web address yourself, which is nodexl.codeplex.com. That will take you to this web page, and you'll note here that this is uh, part of the Microsoft Office Marketplace, which means that the software has been vetted. And also you'll see a reference here to the Social Media Research Foundation, which is uh, itself funded and supported by uh, Microsoft. Uh, this is a legitimate piece of software. It doesn't have viruses in it. It's not a problem for you to download. Uh, you can always check the status of uh, Node XL here. What's the current version? The latest version was updated last November. Uh, I'm going to go through the process of installing it right now, just as you might need to do on your computer. I'm going to hit download, and I'm going to wait for the download to start automatically. I see I have a message here that says, do I want to open it or save it? Uh, it doesn't matter to me whether I open it or save it. I'm, I'm going to open it. If you want to keep the file on your computer, you might save it. Now it's loading, and we'll see how long that takes. Oh, that didn't take very long. Now, for my computer, it's going to want to unzip using WinZip Pro. You can also unzip using Windows Explorer, uh, if, if you would like. So I'm going to take all of these files, select them all, and I'm going to unzip then. Uh, I'm going to unzip them to a selected folder, and let's make that folder be in Documents, and that will be called Node XL. And now I'm going to hit Unzip, and then I go to that folder, and I run Setup. It's saying, are you sure you want to run this software? I say, sure, you want to run this software. Now I'm going to show you how quickly this goes. I haven't made any uh, edits at this point. You can see it's going quickly. I have a flashing message down here. Oh, welcome to the installer. Let's see how long it will take. Let's install it for everyone. And let's move on to next. It's installing. While it's installing, I'm going to close that WinZip program. Oh, look, the bar is already over to the right. Oh, here comes another bar. We never know how far along in progress we are until it's done. But let's see how long it takes. It's working in the background. While we do that, let's head backwards. You'll notice over here to the nodexl.codeplex.com webpage, there's documentations, discussions. You can always download a new version. I'm going to head us back to the syllabus so we can talk about what's going on in week 10. Oh, and look, 
Uh, we've installed it. Now it wants to ask if we would like to register. You may register, but you don't have to. So let's just hit next. And now it's going to say to use Node Excel, Excel template, do the following. In the Windows Start menu, click All Programs or Programs in XP, then Node Excel. Hmm. And then hit Node Excel, Excel template. Let's try that. Uh, we would. Okay, I've closed the installation. That was quick. I could go to All Pro Programs, and then I could look for. Node Excel right here, and I open that, and then I see Node Excel Excel template. Great. Under Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8, you can also just hit the Windows button, which is the curved flag icon, and you can just start to type Node Excel. Oh, look, there it is right at the top. I'm going to click it, and we're going to load it up. This is great. So now that this is up, what do we do? Well, let's take a look at a few tabs here. The first tab to notice is at the top. For Node Excel options, you know there are a lot of Microsoft Excel options here. Insert, data, review, but there's one up at the top called Node Excel. Click on that and you'll see what's called a ribbon, which is a whole set of options up here. The second set of tabs to look at is at the bottom. Edges, vertices are the two big important ones. Edges are what? Another way of talking about ties. Vertices are, are what? Another way of talking about nodes. So this is where you're going to put in your information about your family network and also about uh, your congressional network. So uh, let's take a look back at our assignment and I'll walk you through an example of how you might do that. Uh, of course, you should have read Hansen chapters 4 through 6, which is going to describe some of the uh, ways of handling Node Excel that you'll need to be familiar with. Uh, but let's follow the example of page 54 to 55 in the Hansen text and enter an edge list in the Edges tab in Node Excel to represent the family network you created in Homework 3. What was the rule for that network? Eh, in week three, well, we could go back to the syllabus and we could look. So we want to make sure that we want to have all family ties of parent to child or spouse or partner. And we want to limit that to those within a walk of no more than two steps from you. So let's head back down to week 10. And there's our homework. Let's get started with that. How would we go about entering this information in Node Excel? How would that be different? Well, some of you had trouble uh, creating your edge list. Now's the time when that becomes really important because Node Excel works in edge lists. So I'm going to uh, start with myself. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, my mother name of Margaret, father, name of Clifford. Now that's all the parent-child relationships that I'm involved in where I'm the child, but what about where I'm the parent? There I have two children. I also have a dog you may see, but that doesn't count. And I'm going to enter their names. So what happens next? Let's see. Now I need to think about spouses. I have a spouse. So there we go for step one. They're at a distance of one from me. Now what about Margaret? Uh, she had a mother. She had a father. And you notice there's vertex one and vertex two. Those are the two nodes that are involved in uh, an edge. So I'm creating a list of edges, an edge list. Uh, now there's uh, what, well, Margaret also was married, had a spouse, and also had some children. Now the Margaret James tie is already listed, so I'm not going to list it again, but she had others. 
children. And, uh, okay. Now I need to go to my father, whose mother's and father's names I don't know. So I'm going to put in some shorthand. And then the Margaret Clifford spouse link is already mentioned. But I am going to put in the fact that he had some children. The parent-to-child relationship with me is already listed, so I'm not going to list it again, especially because these are undirected ties. Uh, I can specify that right up here under type, directed or undirected tie. I want it to be undirected. Uh, so who's left? Well, uh, there are my children. And they're not married, but they have a father, and that's already listed. They also have a mother. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Uh, they don't have children of their own. They don't have spouses of their own. Uh, who's left in my original list? To get to distance two, I work with all the people who are at distance one and move out from there. Uh, so we've already gone through Tracy's spouse, Tracy's children, but Tracy also has two parents. <laughs> and as you just heard, we have a dog. Um, so there's our list. Now, Node Excel does something pretty spiffy, which is that when I go ahead and try to show a graph, it's going to try to identify all the unique nodes that are there, what it calls vertices, to use the language of uh, graph theory. So let's, over in this right-hand pane, which is going to show the sociogram, let's hit show graph. Oh, that's pretty interesting right there. Okay. Uh, it's a set of dots. Okay. Let's see if Node Excel in the vertices tab down at the bottom. Oh, yes, it did. It created a set of names from all the edges. It identified all the vertices it could find. I'm going to select and copy that information and paste it into the labels place. Uh, this is a labels column. And then when I refresh the graph, look what we see there. Now we have a set of names. Uh, we can use different visualization schemes in order to make this a little bit more regular. You notice, uh, as you'll read later on in your lecture, there's some Sugiyama principles for visualizing a network. Uh, and there's a, some problems, there's some crossed lines, I don't like that. So I'm going to use the Harrell Corin fast multi-scale method, which uh, operates by the principle of trying to... Here we go, I'm going to move Gladys over, it's not always perfect. Move Gladys over to George, of trying to keep lines from crossing, trying to make those... Uh, who are tied to each other close and those who aren't tied from one another far away. It's called a spring embedded uh, uh, mode of visualization and it usually works pretty well, although there are other methods that you can use as well. So what have I done here? I've been able to visualize my family. Uh, what can I do next? I can right click and I can copy the image to a clipboard and then I could start up Microsoft Word, and I can literally just paste it in. Now, some of you have not been adding your name to the top. That's always a useful thing to do in a, in a document. So, you know, go ahead and before you paste it in, type in your name. My name is James Cook. The date is, um, you know, such and such a date. And I type it in. There's a sociogram. You can then type in any notes you want down here. More notes. Boom. Uh, oh, I do want you to arrange the location of the nodes. I want you to 
label all the notes. Oh, I want you to use different colors and shapes of the notes to refer to different kinds of people in your family network. I haven't done that yet, so let's not go on to Congress yet. Uh, you could think about how to do such a thing using the options in chapters four through six. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I'll show you uh, a few options. Uh, the color, shape, and size uh, columns here on the left-hand pane for the different vertices, the different nodes. Well, uh, if we want to talk about different kinds of family relations, uh, different kinds of people, we might think about people according to their distance. Uh, so how would you do that? Well, you might think of distance in terms of the core of the ego network. I'll make that person red. How about the people at distance one? Let, we could make those people green. And you literally can type in the word green into color. What about if we make the people at distance two blue? Pretty handy. We could also think then about um, people who are parents or children versus people uh, who are spouses. How do we do that? Well, that's an, uh, a difference in the edge, isn't it? So we could say a parent-child relationship might have a different kind of edge. So let's head over to the edges tab and we can talk about the style there. Ooh, a solid versus a, a dashed line. Why don't we make spouses dashed? Now, what does it say there? Excuse me. It says we want to have use. We could use numbers. A number two for a dash. Okay, so let's see. Uh, spouses. Let's see. Uh, spouse. James to Tracy is a spouse. We'll use a two. Uh, Market to Clifford is a two. Uh, and I think those are, are those all the spouses there? I believe so, because we're not going to include the ties between uh, grandparents, because those would be out at a distance of three. So l l let's check. I am always, it's always possible I've made a mistake, but let's refresh the graph so that we will get new colors for the, the nodes, and we will get um, new uh, representations for lines. Okay, so there we have dashed lines for spouses. And otherwise we have, yes, we have parent-child relationships. In my family, they seem to dominate. Um, so there you are, we're done with example one. In, in section, the second section, uh, we, we've gone through steps one through four. Uh, we're going to enter a new edge list in the edges tab. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to save this file. Whenever I do work, I save the file. I know a few of you have needed to go back and redo your work and you didn't save your file and that's a problem. If you're working on a lab computer, bring a little one of those um, thumb drives, USB drives, and save it to a thumb drive. Um, you'll be glad you've done so later. So I'm going to put that in my sociology teaching social networks folder social networks and I'm going to call it family network there so I can always come back to it this is a nice little representation here it tells me a lot but I am now going to close this down and okay. there we are now I'm going to start up node Excel again nice and fresh and what am I going to include this time well, let's go back to the homework assignment. It says we want to enter an edge list in the edges tab to represent the committee by committee network created in homework number six. Ah, oh, great, what could be simpler? It's just five committees. So, and if you think about it, the number of edges that you need to enter are, uh, well, it's five times four divided by two. It's only 10. Uh, because the information on either side of the diagonal is duplicative and the diagonal itself is, is not indicating a tie but just information about a committee itself. So agriculture, ethics, rules, natural resources and veterans affairs are the committees I work with. Of course you worked with different ones. So agriculture, now we're, the other ones are Let's make this big, bigger. 
ethics, uh, rules. I'm just typing these down here temporarily to help me remember. Natural resources and veterans affairs. Now, uh, are each of these tied? Oh no, there are two for, for which we won't actually have ties. Actually, three. So, uh, we know that agriculture is tied to all of the others. So, agriculture to ethics has a tie value of one. Oh, how do you how do you represent that? Hmm. Maybe we need to think about the value. We could put that here. Okay, we can say. Uh, strength, okay, which is the number of overlaps, that's going to have a tie value of 1. Uh, you notice that said other columns. You can always put in your other columns. Uh, what else? Agriculture to rules has a strength of 1. Agriculture to rules has a strength of 1. Then there's agriculture to natural resources. Now that has a strength of greater than 1. It has a strength of six. Agriculture to veterans affairs. Now that has a strength of five. We only have a few more to go through. Ethics does not have a tie of, to rules or to veterans affairs, only to natural resources. So ethics to natural resources. And that tie has a strength of 1. So let's head then to rules. Rules is connected to agriculture, but we already covered that. Rules is connected to natural resources. And that tie strength has uh, is, is a tie strength of 1, because there's one joint member. Uh, natural resources and veterans affairs. And Veterans Affairs has a tie strength of 6. Now, I just put that extra information down at the bottom for my own reference. There we are. Now, I have a column called Strength. Why did I put it in a separate column? Because I could put it in two separate places. The first place I could put it in is as a label. Do you see this column Label? Well, that's where you could put labels for a tie, because we are on edges. Uh, this could be a place where you label the edges. Why don't we give it the label of the tie strength that it has? Let's see what happens when we show the graph. Oh, okay. Now we have a set of tie strength descriptions. That's great. The one thing we don't have now is a set of labels for the nodes. We can fix that, right, by hitting the vertices tab down at the bottom. And we can actually take right here the five names of the committees, and we can put them in the labels column right there. I cut and paste. Cut is, or I copied and paste. Copy is Control C, paste is Control V. And now I'm going to refresh the graph again. And there we have a nice set of uh, descriptions of tie strength uh, and. Uh, and we have labeled nodes. What else did I ask you to do? Uh, I want you to use visualization options that best express the connections between the committees. I want you to be sure tie strength is somehow visualized. Whew. Okay, that's not bad. If I wanted to, I could play with different kinds of visualization schemes. I could visualize it as a circle, perhaps. There, that's a circle. I could visualize it as a uh, Harold Coyne Fast Multiscale, the Spring Embedded. Oh, that's interesting, right? Um, that's useful. It's a different picture. Think about what those different pictures tell you. So now, what else could we do, by the way, if we want to talk about tie strength? We could, let's say we don't want to label them. This works here. Uh, but what if there are more ties and we want to just create a uh, different picture there. Uh, we could talk about the width of the ties. You see, there's uh, in under visual properties width. Well, let's let's mess with that there. Let's 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 put something in there about uh, width. Uh, I, I moved the, all the uh, tie strength information over to width. Let's refresh the graph and see what that did. 
Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. You know, do you think that works as well? Do you think that doesn't work as well? Uh, you know, that's really up to you. Do you think maybe a spiral would be an interesting uh, way to visualize? Is, is that a nice visualization or not? You know, do we like the circle better? What do we think clarifies the best? It's okay, sweetheart. So, my personal preference today for this sociogram in this context is the labels. It seems to work the best. I could use them both, though. And if I did, then what could I do with this sociogram? I could right-click, I could copy the image to the clipboard, and I could paste it right back in, and I could type in a few notes, and then I have completed my homework. That didn't take me too long. Uh, it might take you a little bit longer, uh, but certainly it shouldn't take you that long. If you find that you're working on this for over an hour and you still have some issues that are unresolved for you, please uh, get in touch with me. Either give me a phone call, 621-3190, send me an email, james.m.cook at main.edu. Come to one of my office hours. They're listed in the syllabus. I'd love to meet you in person. Uh, this should be relatively straightforward for you. If it's not, please do make sure that you work at it a little early in the week so that any of those problems uh, can be something that we t have time to talk about. Waiting until the night that the assignment is due and then running into a problem is, is a recipe for disaster. Well, thanks very much for your time. Uh, if you do have any trouble, get in touch with me. Otherwise, hopefully this will be a pretty straightforward assignment that will nonetheless help you think about how networks can be represented in a different way through edge lists using a different uh, uh, software package, Node Excel. Have a good week.